Y'all yo. can't be playing no checkers on no oh, chess right. board, yo. All right, all right, all right, man. Now look, check it. It's simple, it's simple. See this? This the kingpin, all right? And he the man. You get the other dude's king. I like how Wendell, uh, Wendell always got to remind you that we go back. I mean, I go back as a fan to Rage in Harlem, but we worked on getting on the bus together in, uh, in okay, Nashville. Yeah. And uh, it was like uh, my, first, my first interaction with you, and I've always been a big fan. Uh, Dominic, okay. first time I get to talk to you. Um, first, I mean, I, I, I want to talk about the effect of this show, uh, and particularly, like, uh, we lost a great thespian in Michael K. Williams. And... Um, and, and when do I want to know, like, what are you, your your opinion on like him being this this gay gangster, and like and being adored by a community that might not have adored a character like that on TV before that? Um, what do, what do you think about that effect of that creation of that character and this big story that has so much going on? It, it speaks to it, it speaks to uh, the talent of Michael. Uh, and the talent of David and the writers, um, that someone who can be so disparate and different from anything or anyone we've ever seen before can be so truthful and so authentic that it's impossible for you to uh, not connect with them. And I'm sure there were many people who would have never thought of uh, having an affinity for a homicidal, gay, man um, that found his principles and found his uniqueness, something that was um, at least interesting and at best admirable um, and which, uh, with the flaw of being able to kill without, uh, without really good reason. <laughs> and, it just spoke to, um, it, it, it shows you the power of art, yeah. where we reflect on who we are and what our values are. And so for a community that is usually homophobic, um, for them to see someone that they, a character that they care about who is homosexual and then sort of give up that ignorance that they hold on to for so long, uh, that's what I appreciate the most. And I'm, that, that there were probably people who gave up their homophobia because of the portrayal and the work that Michael did to try to show a, a full humanity that they hadn't even considered in people like the character of Homer. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how homophobic I was, but I, I feel like that's the first gay character I ever rooted for that I can remember on TV. I was like, yo, Omar's the man. Um, and that's, you know, fault of me, but my growth and everything else. Dominic, it, you know, the, the community still doesn't know that you're the lead actor. That's how great this show was and how, how balanced it was with characters that they, that, they don't, that they have to really think about how you carry the story through, through every, every season and everything else. How do you feel being like so multi-layered and flawed as, as a lead actor in this story? Um, I mean, you had the, the alcohol, you was, you know, struggling with trying to be a good, good parent after a separation. It was so many things, you banging a judge. I mean, like it's so much stuff that, that made your character like that, that was flawed, but still loved. Like how do you, like. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the judge. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it, it helped that I, I was I was so at sea, really. I didn't know what I was doing. So I think it's sort of, I, I do think it, um, I, I, I do think it, I mean, it was a, to my regret, it was a genuine ensemble piece because because the, the, the star of the show was Baltimore. You know, it wasn't any one character. And, uh, and, and I suppose also the star of the show was, was, the, was the writer's room. It was, it was a show that, uh, that you know, not uniquely, but at that time, it was it, television was becoming a writer's medium rather than a, an advertisers or a sponsors or a, or a producers medium. It was it was the writers who had something to say who were being prioritized for the first time, and they didn't have to uh, c contain it all into 
um, um, you know, beginning, middle and end in each episode. They could write freely. And, and a lot of our writers had never written before. They were brilliant novelists or journalists. But um, and so all those things w made it were what was most important about the show. And, and it made it all the richer because of it, because there wasn't some some star or some some character who's, who's really taking you obviously through the whole thing. But it was a huge regret to me. I wish I had been more of the star. <laughs> I'm always in ensemble pieces. It's a terrible thing. That's oh, been in something. You guys did a great job. And that's why that <laughs> show is remembered after 20 years. It's like when they go to the NBA, they're like, yo, they, they, they drafted Sam Bowie before Jordan or whatever. If they could go back, they would do the right thing. And if they could go back, they would not give William Shatner, a great actor, Boston Legal, those Emmys, and they would be they would be giving it to to Wendell and you and the rest of the cast and and the writers. And I think it, it, it's a testament that we talk about this show and not Deadwood and Boston Legal. Right. You know what I'm saying? So great job! I'm always a fan of you guys. Keep doing your thing, Wendell. I can't wait till we can work on something again together. Yeah, man. Uh, anytime. Listen, man. We had I, we had a great time on Get on the Bus. Feel free to reach out to me anytime, man, you want to do things because uh, I, I like to do the work. And so don't ever feel as though I'm not accessible to you. All right, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jamal. Thank